are now tuned into the Fathers Matter 2 podcast, where we discuss family, careers, community, health, and all the other stuff you just might not talk about in the barbershop. Sponsored by Port Royal Patties and Father Figure Children and Family Services. With your host, David Mines. Fathers Matter 2. Okay, welcome back. We're here with Paul Barnes and Lillian Sarakuma, um, mother and father of the late, great Kumari, <laughs> Bar- uh, Sarakuma Barnes. Um, and I can't, as I said, I can't not say his name without a smile on my face because he. he in fact, before we continue, one of my, my last memory, it isn't my last memory, but it's my, one of my abiding memories of, of Kumari was um, I, I'm driving down the road. I've seen Kamari with a few of his friends outside of a shop. It's clearly after school and they're kind of like just, you know, having a chat. And um, he spotted me. But before he spotted me, uh, a, a, a young girl has walked past with her mum. Yeah. And I could see the look on his face with him and his friends like eyeing her up. And, you know, kind of like wolf, kind of like, like a little sly wolf whistle. And then he, t- he, t- he looks up and he sees me and he's like, that kind of gets himself <laughs> into shape quickly, comes over, he's like, you alright uncle, how you doing, you alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, what are you up to? Yeah, I've just finished school, going home. But I just remember the way how he was just so respectful in, um, in the moment and just assumed that, you know, that position, but also... It was a shortish one at the whole kick as well, I bet, isn't it? 100%. You're <laughs> like, what's this primary school kid doing with all these secondary, <laughs> <laughs> secondary school boys? But yeah, yeah, um... But yeah, just let's let's move the conversation on, and um, I want to talk about um, post Kamari's passing. Yeah. Um, we know that there was a GoFundMe page set up, yeah. um, which I know wasn't set up by you guys. It was set up by a family friend. By my my good friend and yeah. his godmother Sasha Mitchell. Mm-hmm. Um, she was in Canada and didn't know what she could do to help from where she was. Mm. So her initial thought was, "That's it. I'm going to go and do that." And obviously, I'm happy. Yeah, I was just thinking, I was going to ask, what was your, what was your... I was just like, and then she's like, Lillian, I just couldn't think of what, how else I can help. And yeah. that was the only way. And in actual fact, it was a blessing in itself. Mm. And also, even more, well, we got even more support from the community, not just financially, but they heard about what was going yeah. on. So. Yeah, it, for me, it was phenomenal. I mean, yeah. I've not seen anything ever like that. And I'm not, I'm not the yeah. oldest guy in the world but I've mm. been around a little while in, in, in that this community our community yeah. or that specific community and I've not seen anything like that yeah. the, 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 the the not just the money yeah. and, and look let me tell you how much I know it touched people I went to work yeah. the next day mm. how I went to work I don't know I was no use to anyone mm. but obviously it was in the news and when I told the people in the office that that was my friend's son yeah. They straight away wanted to help, yeah. and these are people who know don't know this, you. This is they don't know you. People, I, I get letters from people who just they're reaching out. Yeah. Some they just want to let you know that you know they're just so sorry that you're going mm. through this, which means a lot, especially yeah. when you go to visit him and there's a note left by yeah. his graves. Um, yeah, he's got a few notes left by his graves. Really? So. Yeah. Mm. So there's one from a lady. Where did she come from? Like. It is countryside yeah like was it spot. somerset or somewhere like that oh wow <laughs> yeah. so she's come down she's and asked clearly yeah. where is that plot and yeah. found she's it. left a letter wow yeah. by so, the grave wow support was amazing and also i think like you said it did bring things back to a lot of people that it kind of happened to anyone yeah. so just because of color it kind of brought the community was. together it did, uh, it did. not kind of it, it did brought the community it together did. you know what i mean like even enemies mm. didn't mind being in the same vicinity with each other at the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, like them, you was there at the, um, the stand together. Yeah, outside and, the school. Yeah. Mm. Look how much people was outside there. Yeah. And there was people there who didn't, who didn't, there's a bunch of boys who didn't like an next set of boys. Mm. You know what I mean? But because of... The situation. Yeah. Even that, the, the standalone, um, yeah. that was arranged by Verena, a lady that I've never met before. Mm. And ironically, her daughter happens to have gone to the same, same school, school as okay. my, my girls. Oh, okay. But um, she just took it off her own back and decided that she wanted to do something. And 
that was amazing. It so did, it wasn't it even done by a family member. That yeah. was community support from mm. how I see it. It, it. it truly was something I've never seen. And not, you know, and it... I used to go to school with Freddie still, even okay. though I was a lot younger than him. Yeah. But not a lot. But. And I think on a, on, a, on a downside to that is that you'd wish we could do this... For all the time, for better for, reasons. For living causes, for mm-hmm. causes that are going to help us yeah. better ourselves and who is here. Yeah. And I, I take nothing from anyone mm. who helped and supported because that is fantastic. And we should be doing that much more. But how about, imagine if we could raise those type of funds mm. in that type Capacity, of time yeah. Yeah. for something positive. See, for me, it just reassured me that we are capable. Type of and we, are we, are capable. we can do it. You know, when we you look at the, the situation with Bridge Park Complex at the moment, something mm. a, a situ- establishment that was, was established by the community and the money was raised by the community many moons ago mm. by, you know, a set of community members then, it makes you know there's no we could actually do it again yeah of course of course I just course. you know we just need that commonality that will bring us together I think what we also need to be aware of is that when we are moving to do something we've also got to ref- kind of take note and make sure we're setting ourselves up properly yes. we're dealing with things in the correct manner because, due diligence right and it's important to me that that's how when we do anything for QS for mm-hmm. Kamari mm-hmm. I intend to go through all the little fine tooth, you know, writing everything, mm-hmm. make sure I know everything that I'm supposed to know because our that with Bridge Park, the biggest failure is not backing ourselves up. Yeah. Making yeah. sure we've got things it's set a certain way, even in terms just, of how we run whatever we have. Mm, that's important. Lessons to be learned, definitely. Yeah. I I think professional Lism, professionalism yeah. is is a word that comes to mind, yeah. and that it, it, we must always be professional. Yeah. Oh, no doubt, yeah. no, no doubt. So, um, so I'm not, you mentioned QSB, but we're, we're going to come to that later. Probably in our last segment, we're going to talk about things yeah. like that. What support has been offered to you um, since the passing of Kamari um, individually? Well, um, victim support, trial of thing, mm-hmm. you know. Um, me personally, I took I took counselling mm-hmm. because obviously at, when Kamari's death, I'd also been through two other deaths in quick consent, um, succession. So it was a bit, it's a bit. Um, it was a lot for me still. You know what I mean? So I was going for a lot at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you say you engaged in counselling, how long did you engage? Um, I done it for um, eight weeks, mm-hmm. one session a week. So I done it for about eight weeks. Do you, yeah, do you think that was enough? Um, do you know what? You see, you see with counselling, yeah? Um, you see with counselling, I think it's down to um, what you take from it. You know, like, um, would I say it helps me? Um, to deal with Kamara's situation? No. What counselling did do is it, it, um, it, it enabled me to get a lot of my chest. Even outlet. Yeah, you know what I mean? Which sometimes I didn't realise I, I had so much on me still, you know what I mean? So it, it gave me a channel to, um, you know, to get it all out of me instead of instead of putting it on yourself or my rest of my other friends, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, did, I didn't, I, did I, didn't, I, didn't I, couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't really want to burden people like that. And, and you know, you know, you know, um, to listen to someone going about the same old thing over and over and over and over again, you know, to someone who's saying it, yeah, it's okay to them, but to someone who's listened to me, it's jarring. Maybe not. I think that's what friends are for, to be fair. Well, yeah, but to keep hearing it over and over again, it does. I, it will take its toll after a while. I don't know. I think that's what friends are for. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I it's true. I, I don't necessarily agree. I think if I'm your friend, I'm prepared for that. That's, well, yeah. that's what friends are for, right? But Literally, I, if if I can't if I can't hear you banging on, and especially such a traumatic thing, then yeah, what what, what am I then? And what I just mean? didn't want to burden. I just didn't want to burden. Yeah, him. so I understand. Do, and do you know why that? Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know why that was? Do you know why that was? <laughs> do you know why that was? Um, I was I was in someone's house, right? Mm. Um, I was in a friend's house because a family member had passed away. Yeah. So I was I was I was at the house. So um, it wasn't. It was um, what can I say? It was um, like six months after Kamara had passed, or so. So this, so 
a few people in the house was asking me about Kamari, so it's obvious I was telling them about it. But you know, at that time, they, I used to always talk about him non stop, you know, just talk about the whole situation, what's happening, and, and blah blah blah, you know. But um, but I used to get a lot of people come and ask me. So th- when I was there, a uh, one person come up to me and goes, "Don't don't you get bored about just speaking about Kamari?" Wow. So that's what that's what put you off talking about it. Yeah. Right? Um, this is what made me say, Do you know what? I think I'm going to go to therapy and I can get because I've, I, you know, I, that's this is what this person said to me. He goes, "Don't you get bored of just spe- speaking about Kamari?" Like, so she was trying. So what she was trying to tell me is like. You keep just speaking about him to everyone else. That you think it's a bit jarring for them. This is what she was trying to say to me. You get what I'm trying to say? And I feel like that's someone who... Well, at the time, at Uh, the time, I don't think she realised what she's... I mean, maybe she didn't... I don't know. I'm not sure the context she meant it in, but it doesn't... I wasn't really meant to say the sex real. I just meant it to say (laughs) the sex Yeah, because I didn't even think it was a female. I didn't think it was a female, actually. I thought it was... But then again... I'm actually quite surprised a female said that. So I'm wondering if the context is right, because I can't understand why Mm. you would say that knowing that it's about the death of your son. Like, if we're talking about a car crash and you smashed up your car and you kept talking about your, your, your mashed up car, then mm. I could get someone making that comment to you. But your son, like you're entitled to talk about this boy for the rest well, of your life, every single day. So, so, from that, so when she said that, you know, I didn't say anything else. Oh, yeah. I kept quiet and I said, you know what? That, that's what I pushed think you I'm, to, to go I think to I'm gonna, I think I'm going to phone the victim support and take this counselling up. Well, they say that God works in mysterious ways and yeah. maybe that was... Something mm. that needed to get you to counselling, yeah, yeah, um, and and let's I'll work on that premise because I think counselling is a good thing. Yeah, it, it, was, a, it, was, it was good. It was good. It is. As a community, okay, I think that it's something that we. Well, I know as men, let's talk about mm. men. Men do not do talk enough. to express themselves. We look at the suicide rates of men. It's an that's an epidemic too. Um, it's because we don't talk enough. Counselling will be good for things like that. One hundred percent. So no. I think that you know what let's. Never mind what how, how you got there. I'm not sure about that comment, but you know what? I'm grateful that you you did. I got there. You got there. You know what I mean? You, yeah, you, you I, I not. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm glad I done it. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm glad I done it. Sometimes when I was going there, I, I was in there thinking like oh, I don't really need this, but then come there, I'll go there the next week and think like bloody hell, I'm bloody need yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Because the first day, the first day, the lady was just looking at me like, like. Like, you think you've been through a lot? Yeah. I'm like, it, I don't know what you see as a lot. But that yeah. was like, it is was it, like, is it? that was like, if we got, it was deaths from, it was three deaths from August to January, right? Yeah. And that was three close. Three close people, three people who are in your immediate, in my life, like me, like yeah. people who are very important in my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was, it was, it was, it was a lot. A lot. And Lillian, for yourself, it extended oh, to sorry. a year to tell you the truth, you mm. know, because another because it didn't it because someone else someone else passed away, mm. yeah, not a family member, but I do class him as a person who mm. played a big role in my life growing up. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Lillian, for yourself, um, have you accessed any support external? If I'm honest with you, I think I got my counselling through talking to the people that were around me. Mm being able to express what I, what I was feeling. Yeah. Um, I would say as well that I actually got my counselling listening to other people and what they were going through with the loss of Kamari. Yeah. Mm. It might sound really stupid, but it kind of put things into perspective for me and I, it kind of drew me away from thinking about my own you know, pain. And yeah. I had to kind of stop, look, this is someone who's grown with Kamari. They've known him all their lives. Let me help them deal with this process. Right. This is someone else. So, and that was how you coped yeah, with so, and managed it. Yeah, and it kind of it did. I feel I didn't go through the counselling um, that was offered, and if I'm honest, that was also based on the fact that I haven't. I don't think that there is bespoke counselling to deal that with the have... situation that we were going through. Right. So, so there was a lack of actual resource for you feel for what you would have actually what would have yeah, helped you yeah just even like for instance my doctor uh, i'd know that the doctors were like oh 
if you want counselling, we can refer you to this person, that person. And most of the people that were referring, they were referring me to. It wasn't in the area of what I needed. What you, what you had experienced. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something. And we do. And you know, like, about. and we do, yes, when we get later on to yeah. the QBS. QB, yeah. so, and, it, you know, I work in the field of kind of referring on to agencies like yeah. that. And not just is there sometimes a lack of um, agencies, because there are some agencies that are out there. Mm. Um, but I feel like there's a lack of professionals who actually can understand and yeah, empathise and, and relate to yeah. me yeah. and you. Yeah. Um, and so they've done all the qualifications, and they've, but they don't actually, they've never really walked a day in our shoes mm -hmm. and so it's not the same and so what they might find is really like oh my gosh well that's, 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 that's a normal that's a normal day for us that's a normal week in our life and so how they manage that and how they process it and sometimes offer support around it it's is, not really it, it's yeah it's a bit left but the lady who counseled me she couldn't because she's obviously she's not been through it right you know so right. maybe she's been through what I'd, the experience of what I'd been through mm -hmm. Yeah, um, she would have done a lot better. Yeah, but don't get me wrong. Jacqueline, was, Jacqueline was brilliant. She was still you know, helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Jacqueline was and brilliant, I don't, man. And I, and I don't want to take away anything from the, the people yeah, in that yeah. book. I, I say that really to good, encourage people. Um, you know, we to, did to go say, to you initially say counselling is a very yeah, good yeah. Thing. yeah. it was I good it was good it, we need more we need more people from who, need, who can yeah this is to come into that field this is hundred percent hundred percent I don't want to take anything away from any because they're only mm -hmm. trying and and no. I can't we can't expect everybody to understand no. you know no. what happens in every single different community mm -hmm. and how it might be processed there's a lot yeah. of work yeah. to do you know you've got London is a very diverse place we have people from so many different backgrounds and countries you could never you know you've got a guy from Afghanistan well we're going to find that Afghanistan is kind of <laughs> council yeah. for that would be great in the mm. real world but in the but the reality mm. is we probably won't use yeah. one and if there is one there won't so be maybe, enough so maybe we used to, we also need to look at what is currently in place and maybe yeah. adapting the training for them yeah. and you know doing a lot of shadowing like trying to be able to get our younger lot mm. into that area and yeah, and I, and I think that's down to us as parents, yeah. would be to encourage. I mean, the last interview I did was with um, a guy called Martin Griffiths, yeah. and um, he's a he's a trauma surgeon. Yeah. You know, he would have been the guy, if if, if Kamari was in another era, who would have been trying to save Kamari's yeah. life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, parents to Jamaica and grew up in, 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 in um, I think, South London, mm. um, but ended up as a trauma surgeon and we need more people in, yeah. in, in, in those fields um, but I guess it's, it's our job as parents yeah. to encourage it is our and job push as our parents, children but it's also um, it has to be a collaborative, a collaborative of course approach. even in terms of our the schools need to support our young mm. people a bit better because um, we, we know the old added kind of um, thing is that we, we they, our children will be pushed yeah. to be sportsmen to be to be musical and it can be so much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't get pushed in that way there. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, when I talk about counselling, um, I also counselled myself. Yeah. And saying that is because um, I go out and do a lot of talks and all that, and that that helps a lot because I got to, I got it's, to speak. It's therapeutic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I can get to speak about it and get to speak about certain things without someone saying to me, <laughs> "Don't you think that's a bit jarring?" You're doing that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I wonder if your friend will be watching this well, or, or, or the associate. No, no, it's all blessed, man. It's all good. It's, it's not, you know, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, no, it's all I, I good. It justified, it justified yeah. the end. I, yeah, I think it did because it gave me, it gave, it, it gave me a, um, I suppose, it, it might when be, the person said it, it to me. It might have actually been very calculated because I know you. Lillian knows you and actually if you were told to go to counselling, yeah. you probably yeah. wouldn't have went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I had said to you, yeah, "Oh, let's go. Well. Come on, I'm taking you. Come on, I think you need to go." You probably wouldn't have went. So who knows? It might. No, I think I would have because my wasn't my was all over the mm. place. Still, you know what I mean. So yeah. just I just need to myself for like, <clears throat> I just want to get a lot off my chest and you know. Cause I, mm. I tell, I'll be honest with you. That first counselling session, yeah, worked wonders. Well, yeah, but there wasn't really much talking. Okay. You know what I mean? There was a bit of talking. Well. The bit I tried to get out, but 
it, there was a lot of bloody tears. Yeah, it was. Just, it was. You more, know what I mean? It was more crying. It was a lot of, yeah, it was. A, it was a relief as well. It was. A, it was a relief just to like. <sighs> yeah. And it's important that you talk about this because I think that there's a you know we. I've got friends. I got lots of different friends from different backgrounds. Yeah, and they'll see counselling as a as a as a like, negative thing. Yeah, and so no. we have to we have to um, be willing to talk. Mm. We have to. Be no man, to I wouldn't. I wouldn't class it as a negative. To me, it was. It was. I'd class it as positive. You know? Okay. So how? I I I one of the doc. There was a documentary on recently. What was, what was it called? Um, what was it called? Um, a year of British murders. Oh, you haven't seen it. No. I mean, you don't like watching yourself on TV. I never watch anything. On oh, TV. Well, a so year. I'm not gonna go. And okay. Watch this. Well, a year of British murders came on, and um, in that documentary, um, um, I think I remember hearing you say that, like this, like now you've just got you're being shoved into this place that you didn't ask to be. Mm. Um, how are you managing that? People are coming mm. to you. I, I, I know as your friend, you know, people are, call, you've got radio stations calling you, you've got TV sh- people calling you, they want to interview you. And I know as your friend that you're, you're not an expert in this field, which no. is what you said, which is what you said. And I know it, but you've been thrust into this position. You didn't ask to be. No. How are, you, how are you managing that? And, and um... do you know what? That um, it's it's not too bad. Mm. It's not too bad. Um, because I done a talk. I done a talk the other day at, um at a college. Which do you know what? I enjoyed that talk because that mm. talk that talk that, that talk was sorry that talk was of a difference. You know, um, that talk was in proper engaging kids mm. to find out what to try and get to the core or the heart of the um of the problem. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so that was that was good. Yeah, you know, sometimes I do certain some talks. I, I've wasted my time, mm. but some things I do, it's not a waste, you know. And yeah. I would always keep, I would always keep doing, and I would always keep trying to do, you know. Mm. I know I've been thrust into a situation, but I've not been been asked to be thrust into. But um, as someone said the other day, he goes, he goes, Paul, do you know what's going to happen with you, mate? We're gonna like. We're gonna to have to start trying to use it as an as an advocate for this situation here, you know. Mm. So I said, well, you know what? It's cool. It's gonna to have to be someone. Yeah. Yeah. And you're happy to. Well, that. well, yeah. At first, it was a bit overwhelming. At first, it was a bit like, whoa. But getting your you know? more use. Yeah. Lillian, yourself, I think I've seen you less so. Yeah. Um, is that a this, is that a conscious decision? Is it something you... Is there some method behind that? Are you? No, there's no method. It's mm. just who I am. I don't ne- naturally go out there and want to be. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm more... I look at the paperwork. I look at all the, you know, mm. all the regulations. Say it's, I look at those sort of things. Mm. Those are the things that are important to yeah. me. I think for me, any kind of change that does come about, it's not going to be... It's not going to happen without people um, challenging what's there and asking for change. Yeah. So that's more my avenue. We need more black dads to t- speak out. So we'll get instead to, of instead so, of the mothers. So you, you pre, you've kind of gone for me in terms of the next question. Again, in the documentary, I heard you say we need more dads. Yeah, we need step more up. dads to step up. What do you mean by that? What does that look um, like? When when I when I say a thing like that, yeah. Um, all right, we know how it is. We know how road is. Yeah, let's not let's not beat around the bush. We know how road is, innit? it? Yeah, and you get some people there, man. They um. They have kids, but they don't know how to father or be a dad to their kids. They think it's coming to check them every every so often and give them. But you know, you got to interact as well. You know, it takes it does it does. You know, little things. They having a school play. How long is it, what's it going to take you to go to this, you know what I mean, to your child's school play and you get some dad like, oh, I can't watch a dude thinking about that, man. You know what I mean? You get some people out there who, who prefer to go and, who, who want to go and shot a draw more than do something else with their kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. Probably is all wrong and, and, and I think, I, I'm, I'm saying, I say, I'm making that statement there, yeah. Um, we are a key factor in this epidemic 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Black fathers are a key factor in all of this. Yeah. And um, we just need to start changing our ways and how we how we deal with things. Yeah. You know, it's so easy to say, yeah, we just leave it to the women to start to, to deal with the kids and yeah. No, we need to we need to we need we need we need more interaction, you know. It doesn't take much even to just take your kid to a football match or something like that, you know what I mean? They think if a if a youth wants his hair cut and they've gone and picked him up from his mum to go and get his hair cut at his friend's shop for a couple of hours and brought it back to his mum, yeah. I've done my work for the week, you get me? Mm. Come on man. Well, do you have an opinion on on that statement about fathers? Um and uh, I just think it's a it's takes two, so it's not just the father, the parent. Both parents need to be involved. Mm. If they're not together, they've got to learn a way of co-parenting yeah. and putting the child first. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something that, as a community, we really need to start emphasising. Yeah. And also, I think there is there's allowance for fathers to not be involved and not yeah. to do anything. And yeah. no, nobody really... There's, a, there's an acceptance of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so one of the things I... I <laughs> you know what I do. You guys know what I do. Um, for those who don't, obviously, I, I work a lot with fathers. Um, and it's too easy. It's too easy to talk about... And let's talk... Let's keep it real. And let's just talk about black fathers here. Mm. Okay. It's so easy to say black men are this and black fathers are that and black. It's it's, it's very easy to say that. Mm-hmm. But we're not like that. Uh, but we're not. But what I'm saying is, there are so many factors, so many factors, and one of the projects that I have is called Black Fathers Matter Too. So this podcast is called Fathers Matter Too, but there's also a project that I have called Black Fathers Matter Too. And why? I've worked with fathers for 12 years now. And what I recognise is that there are different challenges. There are some universal challenges that fathers face. Whether you're black, white, Indian, Chinese, whatever, mm-hmm. Afghani. There are, there are some factors that affect fathers that are universal. But there are some factors that are very specific to different communities. And very, you know, so... We deal with the black community. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some issues that we need to be honest and we need to face up to. Yeah. And it's really easy to for for a woman to say, "Yeah, black man are this or black fathers are that." Well, yeah, you might be qualified to only talk about black fathers because you only date black men, but actually, you don't know what white mm-hmm. fathers or Indian men do because you never dated them. Mm-hmm. But let's not hide behind that. I'm more interested in well. How do we support this man? Because everybody's got a different journey. Um, first of all, obviously, we've got to put things into context when it comes to a black man going out there to go and get a job, which mm-hmm. is the first initial thing, mm-hmm. taking care of the family. Their struggles a lot harder than even for myself as mm-hmm. a black woman. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, there's different levels of... yeah how that man will feel in terms of what he can do as a father or how he can provide mm-hmm. for the family. Um, I just think that we need to support more than... Which is what I'm... Exactly. We need yeah. to support because because let's... The, the, the bar has been raised yeah. in terms of if we think about a father of 25, 30 years ago yeah. and what he was expected to do. Yeah. It isn't the same expectation. So if you're fathered by that guy yeah. who 30 years ago, mm. then you might be doing exactly what he did and you'll be falling short today. Of course, yeah. So you've got that element. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the guy who might be your mate who didn't even have his dad, full yeah. stop. So where's he taking it? What's his reference point? Yeah. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So He's instead got to of us, himself. so we we need to support. Yeah, we need to than... build up. We need to support, and and also women are a major part in that of because course. you choose the men. Yeah, and then you choose the involvement. That you, you choose the men. Them. So so where do you set your bar yeah. for what your expectation is yeah. of a man, of a father? It, so it's a whole re-education yeah. of women. And men, yeah, you know, if we want to talk about black men being cheats, yeah. well, 
If I'm a cheat, I have to cheat with someone. Yeah. I can't cheat. Without, yeah, you want me with me? I have to cheat with someone. And and if I'm a heterosexual male, then I'm cheating with a woman. And if I'm if, if a black woman is my preference, mm. then I'm cheating with another black woman. So and she's accepting so she, cheating. So so then so we can't deal with it in isolation. Yeah. She's also part of the mm-hmm. problem. Yeah. So stop. We need to stop just pointing the fingers at black men. No. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break. That was a bit of a lively discussion there. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back on the other side. Port Royal are the nation's favourite patties. The popular street food from our home island of Jamaica combines fresh ingredients, curry, spices and herbs and mixes it together with a little Jamaican expertise. There's beef, chicken, lamb, saltfish and vegetable varieties all wrapped up in a traditional flaky Kingston crust to create a delicious and nutritious parcel of sunshine flavour. The perfect snack for when you're on the go. Wicked, 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 wicked. anytime, day or night. And now everyone wants a taste. 